Back in 2014, we were first told about Dead Island 2 in the works. Nine long years later, and it's finally arrived. Now, you may have some questions like, was it worth the wait? Is it better than Dead Island, or just the same? Well, I've had the pleasure of putting a few hours into the game. You can check out the live stream if you'd like. But first, let's check out the various mechanics and give this game a rating to place it on my bar. Dead Island 2 starts out a few days into a major zombie outbreak in Los Angeles, California, with droves of people trying to evacuate while the undead chew their way through LA. The protagonist almost gets away on a plane, but it ends up back on the ground. After surviving the plane crash, they have to fight their way through hordes of zombies in the hopes of finding a way to escape the newly dubbed Hell A. I'm pretty sure if you've seen any trailer for Dead Island 2, that would be enough to let you know this game is very graphic. And the language is unfit for kids as well. A lot of blood and viscera throughout the entire game. Some final attacks to take out zombies punch a literal hole through their entire skull. It's disgustingly awesome, but best played with kids out of the room. At the start of the game, you get to choose one of six playable characters, each with their own unique stats. You have to pick carefully because there is no changing after the game starts, but there's no saying you couldn't start a whole new game, I guess. I went with Amy. She can't take many hits, but she's the most agile of the crew, and I like to move fast, so obviously that's who I would want. After getting out of the burning wreckage that was my plane, I was attacked by a small group of zombies, a perfect opportunity for the game to give me a small tutorial on the basics of combat. Light attacks that deal low damage and heavy attacks that deal a lot of damage and take away from my stamina. After swinging my makeshift sword around for a while, it's almost at its limit. Before it breaks and becomes useless, I can throw it at an enemy for some decent damage and pick up another thing to attack with, like a metal pipe or a burning piece of wood. Later on, there are crafting tables available. I could use those to add mods to weapons, giving them special effects like fire or electric attacks, and I could repair my weapons using cash. Which is odd, I have no idea where the cash goes. After I found something I really liked, like a badass metal bow staff, I could keep it repaired and fight with it forever. Oh, and as I leveled up, I could spend some cash to upgrade my weapons to match my level so they never became useless trash taking up space. To make mods, I had to collect different materials off of zombies or lying around everywhere. Sometimes I would run into a merchant who would sell weapons, blueprints, and materials, but they only ever had like two of a material on hand, and for an absurd price. There was an RPG aspect in Dead Island 2 in the fact that enemies and myself have a level affecting damage done and health. If an enemy was a few levels higher than me, there would be a skull next to its name, so I had no idea what its actual level was. They hit hard, and take forever to kill. I fought one once. It took a long time. I was hanging by a thread the entire time, not letting it touch me. One hit, and I was a goner. After finally bringing the beast down, I got the same amount of experience points for taking out an enemy at my level. Total bullcrap. Definitely not worth the stress to fight something out of my league. As I leveled up, my character would unlock slots, where I could equip special cards giving me an ability to fight with or a passive ability that would heal me after a specific action. There are a lot of cards. Some are handed out when leveling up, while others have to be found lying around. So keep your eyes open. There may be a super special card that could change your life, hiding underneath a desk, 
and you don't want to miss that. So, fighting zombies didn't really yield a whole lot of experience. The only way to keep up with the level of the story, I was forced to take on some side quests. Dead Island 2 has a lot of different areas to play in, each with their own collectibles and quests, or missions, whatever you want to call them. Anyway, the side quests usually took me back to an area I've already been through with some tougher enemies. Some quests were shorter than others, but all of them usually gave a decent reward of experience, cash, and sometimes the blueprint for a new mod. After about 8 hours of gameplay, I opened up the ability to fast travel to areas I'd already been to, making it much easier to knock out missed side quests if I wanted. Walking by foot from Santa Monica to Bel Air would take way too long otherwise. If I already did it once during the story, why should I have to do it again, right? And the amount of zombies I'd have to fight through would just add to the trip. Like a huge, clotted artery. There are only like two different basic zombies, walkers and runners. But they come in a whole lot of different flavors. Some are immune to shock damage, so if I whack them with a shocking knife, nothing happens. And they usually explode shock around them. Sometimes, they're just covered in something spiky like barbed wire that caused me to bleed a little more when they attack. It's important to know what kind of zombie you're dealing with so you can react accordingly. After basic zombies come the super tough and scary Apex variants. There are quite a few to look out for, usually starting out as a boss fight. These things do not mess around. After their first appearance, they start poking their ugly heads everywhere. Things can get pretty tough when regular zombies are hanging out with an Apex variant to back them up. Definitely keeps you on your toes. Let's talk about the weapons. Some slow with high damage and a long reach, others fast with low damage and short reach. There are a lot of different things to pick up and start swinging. I played with quite a few I thought I liked, like these awesome claws that could punch a zombie's face through the back of its skull. But they didn't quite put out enough damage and I ended up on the ground a lot. I finally found a bow staff and immediately fell in love. Running around an enemy swinging non-stop, it's just so damn satisfying I don't want to use anything else. Except for maybe guns, sometimes. There are guns available in the game with blueprints to craft ammo if needed. I didn't use a whole lot, but it seemed like ammunition wasn't a major issue. I don't think you could find enough to fight only with guns, but why would you want to with all the different whacking tools? Adding to the arsenal of weapons are what we call curveballs. Rechargeable items with special aspects I could throw at my enemies. Like a jar full of meat that would attract zombies to it so I could herd them into a trap. Or even a pipe bomb for a simple explosion taking them out. Only two curveballs could be equipped at once, and after it was used there would be a short cooldown before a curveball could be used in that slot again. Speaking of traps, there is a lot in the environment to use in the never-ending fight against the undead. Jerry cans are everywhere, full of water, gas, or caustic acid. All of which, when used properly, can set for an amazing trap, whittling down a zombie's health before I took my first swing. I have to bring up some things I didn't really get to try out, but seems pretty neat. They implemented Alexa into the game, allowing for someone to actually call out to a nearby zombie, attracting them closer or even activating abilities on command. And there's co-op. I don't have anyone to play with, but the idea of taking on a lot of zombies with a friend sounds like a lot of fun. It would be great having someone to watch your back all the time. As of right now, I am 12 hours into the game. I'm thinking a little over halfway, and I fully intend on finishing it. So far, it feels very similar to the first game, with better graphics and smoother gameplay. But it has been a long time since I played the first, so I could be way off. Anyway, let's get these ratings underway. First, let's talk about the visuals. The zombies look very good. It's an extremely graphic game, and it was well executed. We're going with a 4. 
Next up, story. I found the story a little cliche. You know, been there, done that. And most of the characters were a little over the top. Some of the jokes were all right, but ultimately I want to give it a two. The gameplay was very good. A weapon wheel to swap weapons on the fly was easy to handle and movement was excellent. The only thing kind of odd were sometimes the sudden appearance or disappearance of zombies. Like they would suddenly appear in front of me, stopping me from moving forward. It's a four. I don't plan on replaying the game, but with six different characters to play as, the replayability is pretty high, giving it another four. It was a fun game to play. The beginning was a slow burn, but after getting some decent weapons and levels, it got a lot better. So I'm going with a three. Bringing the final score to a 3.4 out of five, earning it a home right there on the mid shelf. It's an excellent game if you're into zombies, comical mayhem, and a lot of melee combat. I prefer Dying Light to this. Dead Island 2 wasn't scary. There were some jump scares, but they became repetitive and predictable. I would ultimately say, wait for a sale on this one. Now that I'm done with that one, time to move on to the next. I will see you there. Bye.